Hey you folks, Quillikeen here and welcome to a live preview of XCOM 2. I have my hands on a preview build here. Uh, I got it. It's about two months before release of this build here. So obviously some things might be different from the end, but I'm really excited to be playing this for you guys right now. Now do note, there is a very strict embargo about Oh, just about anything that would be considered to be a plot spoiler. Obviously, there's always going to be a little tiny bit of light spoiler just by gameplay itself. Uh, but effectively, every cutscene, anything I can tell you about any kind of character like that, um, anytime, anything I can tell you about story development other than the basic plot outline of XCOM 2 that's already been released, I will not be able to show you. As a result, A... <clears throat> this this gameplay should be relatively light on spoilers, which is going to be very exciting for some people. On the other hand, um, if uh, suddenly a cutscene starts, I might have to put a very kind of awkward cut in the video at some point, uh, just because I'm not allowed to show you those things. So just be prepared for those things, but otherwise, sit back and enjoy. Now, we are starting in the middle of a mission here. Well, we are starting at the beginning of a mission here, because this is literally the earliest point at which I can start recording this. At this point, I have completed effectively two missions, which are both sort of tutorially style missions. Um, so they have both been done, and um, I wasn't able to show you them because they have a fair amount of plot development in there. But other than that, we are as early as we can be in this gameplay. I have a squad of four people. Um, I'm trying to remember if they have been specialized. I think one has. Oh, okay, I have one sharpshooter here, Bonnie Grant. I will be renaming and redesigning these people when we get back to base after this mission. Um, and I do have right over here, Kelly, Jane Kelly is a, um, is a ranger. So she is packing a shotgun, and she's got a sword on her back. She can do melee attacks. So our sharpshooter over here obviously has the sniper rifle, long-range fire ability here, and as well as a pistol. Our rookies, the other two characters, only have an assault rifle. Rookies do not get p pistols anymore. They don't have a secondary weapon. Although, what's your name? Uh, Wujin Choi over here has been equipped with a med kit. They're not a sport specialist, but they do have a med kit. Oh, actually, um... I only have one Ricky. Wujin is the only Ricky, because Mary Sutherland over here is actually my... I believe they call the class the Grenadier in uh, in XCOM 2. This is my my assault person. She carries a minigun and has a, uh, a grenade launcher, so she can fire grenades at a longer range than just thrown. So, and that's it. And then this mission, I don't recall exactly what the setup for this mission was, but we have to go and neutralize all enemy targets and destroy a relay before transmission begins. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get this bad boy on the road. Oh, one final disclaimer. Don't expect me to be super good at this, okay? Uh, there will be mistakes made. Uh, both because I'm relatively new to XCOM 2 specifically, and also because just in general there's going to be mistakes made. So be prepared for some of that, but otherwise we'll try to do our best. Alright, so we do have a timer on here, which does mean we have to be a little bit aggressive with our forward moves, which is always a little bit scary because you never know when you might accidentally move a bit too far. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to start things off by moving my sniper into position over here. You can't use this, you need both moves to be able to use the sniper rifle, so I don't think it makes much sense to be a partial move. It's very unlikely that moving up to here will get me in a tremendous amount of trouble, so we're gonna move into full cover over here and see what's what. It's worth noting, our squad starts off concealed. This is a new function in XCOM 2, where even if I were to spot an alien right now, they would not automatically aggro. <clears throat> they wouldn't be static, they, a lot of them tend to pace a little bit, but they wouldn't actually start firing back, giving us the opportunity to set up for our particular attack sequence. Red squares are areas where if you walk into them, you will get spotted and that will break concealment. In this case, it's very interesting. There's not an enemy over here. There's simply civilians. Civilians do have very low sight range, luckily, but they do wander around. And if they see a bunch of people running around with guns, they will scream and alert the authorities. In this world... You are the villain. The aliens have taken over the world. They've convinced the world government that they are good and helpful. And as a result, we are... We're just vigilantes. We're just practically terrorists. We are on the edge of the map here. I could probably move to here and be relatively safe. I'm tempted to move forward really aggressively over here. Now, we haven't spotted any aliens yet. We've got vision from here. We've got, <clears throat> excuse me, pretty good vision. We haven't spotted anyone. I suspect I can move up to here and not break concealment. So let's cross our fingers that that will work out. If I break concealment a little too early here, we might definitely get some fatalities. Especially with a rookie who only has his five hit points. 
So, uh, Mary Sutherland, our assault person. Let's see. I'm not going to move any closer to the civilian. Uh, there could be stuff in this room or even behind here. Doesn't seem all that likely. And I certainly want to keep moving towards the target. What I might do is go right over here so we can keep an eye inside the building. Notice the uh, exclamation marks here. The same as in the vision area. This is because if I were to make this move, I would be jumping through the window and breaking the glass, which would break concealment. So I think I'm going to go here. That way you can spot inside the building a bit more. Um, we did walk, walk through here, so it seems very unlikely that there's any alien in here. Plus, we've got some vision with windows, so we should be okay. In fact, I'm actually tempted to just move up a little further. I think I'm going to do that. Already there. <clears throat> I think that if there had been someone inside the building, we would have noticed them by now, so that's all right. And then finally, Jane Kelly, our assault specialist over here. I can't remember, can I get the stats if I click over here? Because it used to be there were buttons, or you could hit something like F1. What do we have? That's our evac button, and turn, soldiers, rotate the camera. No, not getting anything over there. F1's not doing anything. Oh, and there's some civilians over here. So definitely not walk through there. Um, I think I'm tempted to run all the way over here. Hopefully the civilians don't pace over this way. But yeah, I'm going to try to move forward as much as possible with my, um, with my ranger. Okay. We do have some aliens about. They're pacing. There's also a tower over here, which is providing vision over the area. But these aliens are not responding to me. We are still concealed. We are out of range, which is great because they haven't made a move for cover. You can see the alien vision is quite a bit further. It reaches all the way over here. They're much, much more sensitive uh, to enemy presence. Now, how do we want to handle this? How do we want to set up? Let's see. We can put a couple people under uh, partial cover over here. And in fact, these two folks in the front can move over here and go into Overwatch. And what's interesting about that is if you are in Overwatch when someone breaks cover, the Overwatch will trigger. Because breaking cover, these people will start to move, which will instantly trigger the Overwatch. So I think what I'd like to do is get both of these people into cover over here. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. And then put them on Overwatch. So, the Overwatch is this one over here, so we'll hit that. Boom. And we're gonna grab, not Mary, but Wujin over here. Hopefully he'll still get an angle of attack, I guess we'll be able to confirm that. Yeah, he's still got um, an angle of attack over here. So again, go into Overwatch. Overwatch. And, hmm, well my sniper could shoot from back here. What are our odds of firing? 71%, 69%, oh, not bad at all, excellent. So we're going to keep the sniper back there. The only big question becomes Mary Sutherland. <clears throat> I guess what I'm going to do is put her undercover right over here and overwatch as well. I could also start with a grenade. I'm betting she could reach with her grenade launcher. In fact, she could. Now, the grenade only does, well, it's three to four damage, apparently. Uh, typically, only three damage. It's really good for clearing cover. It's not going to kill anyone yet. So, I think I'm going to hold off on this grenade. And I think I will just put her under Overwatch. So, we'll get a good sneak attack. Now, the question is, who do I shoot first? Certainly, if I snipe this soldier here, uh, he should die to one shot. He's only got three hit points. This alien tends to be a lot scarier. So this is the new sectoid over here. They're a lot more impressive than the old ones. They still have a lot of mind control type abilities. They can also, well, tell you what, I'm going to save some things for a surprise for later. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the guaranteed kill on this fellow over here. And then we'll deal with the sectoid. I mean, I guess I could go for the higher uh, hit chance, which is always nice. It's only a 2% difference, though. I guess the sniper rifle does so much damage. You know what? Let's go for the 71%. 4 to 6 damage. Hope we get lucky. Got the hit. 4 damage, which is really our minimal amount, which is too bad. But now, we have broken concealment. The aliens will begin to respond. And then all of our overwatch will go. Shotgun blast. Very nice. Missed there. Oh, that's really unfortunate. And missed with the minigun. Come on, you guys. Ah, goddamn. Yeah, I didn't get it. Yeah, no kidding, you didn't get it. So we're only in half cover here, and they're relatively close. We'll probably get shot. Oh no, he's running back. Okay, so he didn't take a shot, which is good. But now I think he's alerting more reinforcements. That's oh, that was a perfect setup, and it just didn't work out for us. 
Okay, six turns until the um, the uh, transmitter goes. We have to just kill it. We don't have to hack it or anything like that. We only have to blow it up, which does give us a bigger margin of error. Now, I can shoot from back here. Only 40%. That's not good. I could move up. Uh, can I get a flank on this fellow? With anyone? It seems very unlikely. Yeah, no. Now, that's an interesting thing. Oh, that would be targeting, targeting the relay. We can target the relay from here. I'm not getting percentage shots. I think that's just because it's cover. Okay, 46% is far from great. I think what I'm going to do is, is start by moving up my sniper. Can we get a decent shot from here? 40%. That's actually really tempting. The other thing I could do is blow up his cover. Actually, I could just kill him with a grenade shot. Now, Jane has got a grenade, but she's only got one. I think I will save it. You know what? Let's go ahead. Mary Sutherland, you're going to get to do your, your personal specialty. I mean, your grenadier, so... Or grenadier. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm worried if I go into this cover, I might not be able to have an angle. As opposed to here. It's only half cover, but... Just because I've seen it before with some of this blown up thing, I think we could probably shoot from here. Okay, let's tell you what, let's be safe. We'll move here. Push comes to shove, we can use um, we can use our other character's grenades. But here we've got a nice long range shot. Let's activate the frag grenade launcher. And blow him up. He's only got three hit points, it will kill him. Boom. Excellent. Okay, no more targets visible. So... This thing, again, could have broken concealment. But now that I think there's no concealment, I don't think this um, this watchtower is, is doing anything notable. Um, I guess we should play it a little bit safe. It doesn't look like there's any threats out here, but I'm going to scooch up to here at first. We might, do a, we might do another move after, but let's move here first. Confirm there's no vision. I'm not going to use up this uh, character's movement yet. I mean, I'm just going to put a pause in there. Um, right, you have squad sight, is what this is. And target enemies within tar squad mates' sight, provided there's a line of sight to the target. Uh, but I'm just going to scooch up my sniper basically as much as possible. We're going to go over here. Clearly there's no threats right now. This should be good line of sight for the next round of attack. Jane Kelly, I'm going to go ahead and double move you up to here. Because we haven't spotted any threats, so this should be safe. And it's just Wu Jin's move. He can't... Oh, he could move over here to different cover. And a different angle of attack. Oh yeah, that seems like a good idea. Let's do that. I could have overwatched him as well. Uh, maybe I should have, because apparently I moved a little too close. We're no longer in concealment, so these people will respond to us. Uh, I probably should have stood back. So that was their response turn. And now they get an actual action. Which is going to apparently be to flank me. And probably use psychic nonsense against me. What? Which one are you going to do? Help! No, damn it, no! Okay, we are panicked. Until that guy dies, we are going to be panicked. And we got an overwatch, which is going to trigger when the panicked character just runs. Ow, ow, ow! Oh, thank you very much. Woo! Panic character is taking a shot on her own. Missed. All right, now we're going to want to take out that sectoid. We don't get to use her action because she is panicked. So, a couple of ideas here. Now, the sectoid has cover right now. Why don't we go ahead and eliminate that cover? Launch frag grenade. Yep, right around there. So that will hit the sectoid for three or four damage. Again, almost always three. But more importantly, we'll remove the sectoid's cover. Excellent. Sectoid has five hit points left. Let's hope the sniper can finish the job. The sniper here also has the pistol, which is nice because it only uses one action, and you can, these sharpshooters can be specialized to do amazing pistol stuff. It is always tempting, of course, to specialize your sharpshooter in uh, snipers, 
because sniper rifles are very powerful, long range gives you a lot of advantage, but the pistol nonsense they can do is really amazing. We got a critical hit there, the sectoid was not under cover, dramatically increasing the chance of getting a critical. That's great, that will break the panic over here because the mind control effect has been uh, lifted. And then... What's my odds over here? 52%. I could flank. I guess I could move up here. That should give me flanking there. I better kill it because otherwise I'm going to be very, 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 very exposed. Can't really safely get any other kind of flank. I could go here, which would be safe-ish, but I think we'd still have cover from each other and this guy could actually run around. I think I'm going to go and take the risk. Sure. Good copy. What could target. possibly go wrong? This is actually probably a really stupid thing to do. Wait, do you still have cover? Really? Alright, well, hopefully the 64% chance will work. Like, seriously! How do you not hit this guy? Okay, so that was a mistake. I think my logic was solid. I guess it's because I was still one tile over this way in the direction of the cover. Now, there is an angle thing, so by being at this angle, we did get less of a cover penalty. It's interesting that the guy doesn't decide to shoot me, but he is alone. Alright, so we're going to scooch up to here. That is the objective, yes. We've got four turns left. Okay, we've got some advent over there. They will move into cover right now. They'll respond, but they won't get their action. <clears throat> which is okay. Do I have a good shot on anyone over here? I could just go for the target. <clears throat> I don't think that makes much sense. I, could, I don't think it makes much sense to hold for an overwatch here either. I think we're going to take the 50-50 on this guy. Excellent. And luckily, the other two advent people buzzing around. Oh, and he dropped loot. And he got a promotion. He's no longer going to be a rookie. Excellent. Um, I think we're just going to move up as much as possible here with our sniper. That's not our sniper. That's our uh, our heavy grenadier. Grenadier. And same thing here. We're just going to scooch up a fair amount. So that is going to leave two guys not being fired at. Luckily, the closest target to them is under full cover. So I think we're going to be okay. It would be really nice to do a sword attack here, but we're way too far to be able to do any of that. This is full cover. I think that's going to be swell. We're not really in a position to get flanked. Affirmative. So yeah, we're going to move up to here. Okay, four turns left. And again, we only have to destroy it. I do want to pick up this thing. If we complete the mission, we will collect this item. So that much is good. As long as we complete the mission successfully, we will pick it up. Or, of course, we can pick it up manually. Okay. Oh, you actually shot for me over here. This character is only in half cover. But she is very far away, so I was hoping that that would be all right. The alien transmission is still active and we're running out of time. Get to the relay and take it out. ASAP. Don't worry. We got it. We got it. We got it. Everything is fine. Nothing to worry about. Um, where's my sharpshooter? Right over here. 55%. A 55% of the time, this works all of the time. Damn. Target still up. Now, my ranger here. Yeah, alright. So this person in the back, we're going to take out with the ranger. So the thing is, we really want to take out the character in the front. At 54%. Well, one of these has got to hit, right? Excellent. So as far as I know, there's only one left. It's possible that I don't have vision. And what? Let me move one character over here for better sight. Plus, we'll be in a good position to blow up the relay next turn. Oh, right. You were under Overwatch. And you hit me? Through a wall? All right. So I did that in the bad order. I forgot that he was on Overwatch. Although... I guess I would have been overwatched from point-blank range over here. Yeah, alright, so I guess it worked out better. Anyway, there's no other aliens about, so this should be safe. So, we're going to do a charge. So we can double move and attack with the sword. That's the real strong uh, point with the, uh, the melee weapons. Double move, attack. Plus, we're going to end the turn within here, so we should automatically loot this. 
we got a new stock for a weapon. We'll guarantee that even missed shots will do a small amount of damage. Love that. Got something new. We have neutralized all enemy targets. There's literally no one left alive, so all we have to do is blow up this relay. Minigun seems like a good way to do it. Or not? Okay. Oh, you're actually out of ammo. So, move up and reload. One change from uh, XCOM, I don't know, enemy unknown within, however we want to call it, uh, is that you can reload and then move. Reloading doesn't end your turn. I mean, in XCOM... I, I don't know, in enemy whatever. It, it did... Um, you could... It only used one action, so you could move and reload, but now you can reload and move, or even reload and, I think, take a shot, which is nice. You can move up to here and actually take a pistol shot. You're out of ammo in your um, sniper rifle, but your pistol's there. And actually, I don't even know if the pistol ever uses ammo. <clears throat> Bam. It must, but it's not really displayed on the screen. Mission complete. Mission accomplished. So we have one wounded soldier. That's too bad. Feel a little bit dumb about that, but I get—I mean, I guess I could have played it safe and just shot him from a distance, but I really did want to sort him. So I guess no matter what, we're going to take an Overwatch attack. So there we go. Our shots were successful two-thirds of the time. I do not believe Overwatch shots get counted in that percentage. So there we go. We got a new record of enemies killed per turn and our cover bonus. We actually did spend a good amount of time in mostly full cover, so that's pretty good. I think... I, I'm not sure if full cover counts as 100% here or not, or how it works. And welcome to our base. And if there happens to be a cutscene, I will have to cut it out here. I don't think there should be. I mean, this is just arriving to the base. It's not a real cutscene. Our troops are making it look easy out there, Commander. All thanks to you. Sutherland. Oh, Sutherland is gravely wounded at that. Not lightly wounded, gravely wounded. I mean, she did take half her hit points in damage, so I guess that makes a lot of sense. Everyone else got a promotion, which is good. Actually, Sutherland, how did you not get a promotion? You got three kills. I guess that's total kills. You might not have gotten kill this episode, this mission. All right, I guess that's fair. Let's get some promotions. Uh, Choi over here, you're going to be promoted. Excellent, you have been promoted to a support person, which is good. We don't have one yet. Specialists deploy robotic drones on the battlefield that can be outfitted for combat or field medic duty. So a specialist is a great sort of support person, does excel at healing or buffing and hacking. That that in particular that combat drone can hack things at a distance, which is really powerful. Especially with those um the the survey, this the I don't know, surveillance towers, right, that we saw in this mission that can break cover. Well, you can't hack those because normally you have to walk up to them to hack them. And if you walk up to them, you break cover. But the gremlin can hack at a distance. You might have to unlock something for that. I don't remember. Uh, but And then you can disable those towers without breaking cover. So we've got the aid protocol right now unlocked, which is the ability to send our gremlin to give a bonus to defense to our target. So uh, basically some cover like a smoke grenade or something of that nature. But, you know, it's the gremlin here. I guess maybe it gives you shielding or something. We'll see. Uh, Kelly here, who is our ranger, we're going to promote her. So her ability as being a ranger is the ability to have that slash attack, right? Including the ability to double move and still use the slash attack, which is really potent. So now we got some interesting choices here. We can go Blade Master, which does an extra plus two damage on sword attacks. The sword already does decent damage. This will add even more damage, guaranteeing kills. I mean, the last thing you want to do is hit someone with a sword, have them survive while you're standing next to them. That would be bad news. On the other hand, Phantom is supremely cool. If your squad breaks cover, it doesn't break your cover, which means that rangers, uh, obviously they won't participate in that initial sneak attack, um, you know, unless they, them, them, unless you want them themselves to break cover, but it enables them to stay concealed and act as a forward scout, which is a really powerful ability. In particular, I, I've played a few little test missions here. There are several missions that start your squad off not concealed because you're dropping into a hot zone and you're not sneaking into this zone. So um, the aliens know you're coming. So you don't start off concealed, except that your ranger with Phantom still does. So we are absolutely gonna go and take this route. I think that's really, really cool, especially for that. The, the staying concealed when you break concealment may or may not be critical, but being able to start concealed in a situation where normally you wouldn't have it is awesome. Sharpshooter is gonna get a promotion. 
We've got Long Watch. Long Watch allows Overwatch to trigger a squad sight. So again, squad sight is the ability to share vision with your squad mates. So this would allow us to Overwatch using that, um, which is nice. But I really like Return Fire. When targeted by enemy fire, automatically fire back with your pistol once per turn. Free shots are good. This is going to be a very specific situation. A, we have to be in Overwatch, and it has to be in a situation where we wouldn't already have vision. And there's very few times that's necessarily going to happen. I mean, admittedly, we might not get shot at that often. But what a cool ability to shoot back for free. I'm going to take this one. I just like it. I don't know if it's going to be better or not, but I like it. All right, we collected that weapon stock. Missed shots still deal one damage to the target. Freaking love that. And we got some extra corpses. Wonderful. Some help. We can start clearing out the old equipment and debris from the ship to make room for new facilities. All right. So one of the rewards for completing the mission that I just did was we acquired Charlie Ferguson, who is an engineer. And we've unlocked the ability to start excavating sites. So we've got a prompt over here. So we are on a ship. We are not underground this time. We are on a stolen alien ship. And th that being said, there's still the mechanic of building up your base, and in particular, sort of quote-unquote digging. In this case, it's digging, clearing out alien debris in some of these compartments so that we can build some extra facilities there. So we're going to get that started. Get these rooms. First, we'll need to assign an engineer to the task. Once we start getting into the far reaches of the ship, it's going to take more time and manpower to make space for new facilities. Roger, roger. So we have to assign an engineer. We'll use Charlie Ferguson. He'll give us 100% bonus to our excavation looks speed. Good to me. That looks Just pretty good. Give the word and we'll get started, Commander. All right, and excavate. We'll also gain 26 supplies from clearing this out. Supplies Thank are the new money. Me, Commander, but it's going to take some time to get all that stuff cleared out. Commander, Kay. we have a secure transmission coming through. Source unknown. Patching it through to your I will course. probably have to put a cut in here, folks. Once I hit the command button. Okay. So we're going to do that. So I've got supplies over here. 140 supplies is what I have left. We've got an income of 150 from various um, resistance sources around the world. And we will get a little bit more from digging out these areas. So I do have to go to my command. I am going to get a transmission here. And I believe that is going to be something that's going to be covered by the embargo ban. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say goodbye here. We're going to deal with our transmission. And in the next episode, we will most likely be going to the Geoscape and looking at the world map for the first time, which is really exciting, really wonderful. I'm very excited about this new mechanic. See you next time, folks. Bye-bye.